ETH lizards, you know what they are, but that's just the tip of the iceberg of what's going on here. Uh, let's see, what? Lizard Labs that we're going to talk about, Lizcoin. There's a whole lot going on right now, and you're gearing up for the seed round of the Lizcoin. So I have Annie Knows here. Welcome. I'm glad to have you here and got some questions for you that, you know, I think the community is wondering about. Yeah, Najaf, really appreciate it, man. Um, certainly, it's it's been a, a wild last uh, year or so for ETH Lizards as a community. Um, the the Lizard Labs team is just like super super over the moon right now uh, with how well things have gone uh, with the Battle and Beyond platform, and we're going to our, our next major activation, which is as you mentioned, the seed round uh, to keep scaling up in the uh, the development works that we're doing. So yeah, happy to talk through all of it. Um, so yeah, we can just jump right in. So anyone who's watching this that, you know, maybe they have an ETH Lizards or they know about what's been going on with ETH Lizards, but doesn't have any clue what Lizards Labs is, tell us what Lizards Lab Labs is and how the Lizcoin fits into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> so anyone that, that is familiar with ETH Lizards knows the Genesis and the Venture Collections. The the lizard behind me on the wall over here, uh, this, uh, this beautiful guy, um, he's one of the Venture Lizards. Uh, they are a collection uh, built and designed for builders, investors, traders in, in the Web3 ecosystem, and especially in Web3 gaming. Um, those are the, the NFTs that are focused around our portfolio sub-DAO activities. And so uh, what I mean by this is that the, the NFT collection that gives access to early stage deal flow uh, in Web3 gaming projects, uh, pre-seed, seed investments, um, both from our treasury and for the individual holders themselves. Um, there's a lot of alpha and information about other projects that are building the space uh, that those NFT collections give you access to as a community. The Lizcoin is a, a new token that's going to be launched in uh, late Q1, early Q2 of next year. And this is for our community and partnership sub -DAO. And so this is the organization that's focused on building out a whole suite of interconnected gaming experiences. These are mini games, meta games, uh, tournaments, competitions, all built on top of some of the top Web3 gaming studios in the sector. And uh, the, the Lizcoin token is funding the round of development that's going into those. So we started with Battle in the Beyond for anyone that's, that's seen this product with Alluvium. Uh, and we're going to now be scaling up and replicating that process uh, with the next round of our partner studios. So what exactly is the utility for, for this Lizcoin? Hmm. So, yeah, there's a few core elements. The, the first one is uh, if you are a, an active community member in ETH Lizards and you were staking your Lizcoin, uh, we have a yield farming program that basically mirrors uh, your most, most kind of DeFi projects uh, in the, the staking process, but has one core element that's, that's different. For us, uh, in order to receive yield farming, you have to be actively participating in the ecosystem. So this might be everything from participating in governance voting to uh, supporting social media posts to creating your own content, just, just like you're doing here in a JAFE. Um, or it could be uh, QAing some of the different products that we're putting out. It could be participating in different gaming tournaments with our partners. There's going to be a whole host of ways. So we want to make it very accessible. Uh, you don't have to have just one particular skill set to be able to add value to the organization. But anyone who's a gamer, a guild leader, a content creator, um, there's going to be ways that you can participate and help grow the ETH Lizards ecosystem. Um, so that, that yield farming is going to be something that's really value added for uh, folks that are here in the project. And then we've got additional utility through uh, exclusive sales that are going to be only Lizcoin uh, accessible. So some of the metagames that I talked about, uh, we're going to have uh, very specific utility and assets that are only purchasable through Lizcoin. Uh, we're also going to have some competitions um, that, that may require uh, Lizcoin to be able to, to access. Uh, in addition, uh, the token itself is, as I kind of mentioned, the governance uh, token for this entire sub DAO. So just like uh, the lizards themselves are the governance and access token uh, for the, the portfolio sub DAO, the Lizcoin is the governance and access token uh, for this, this gaming part of the organization. Now there is a max supply, right? So it's not inflationary, I mean, to a sense, but is it deflationary in any way? 
So it's not deflationary, at least not in the current token structure. Again, you know, our, our community um, always, as a DAO, you know, we, we could introduce some new proposals that might change that. Um, at the moment, though, it's planned to just stay as 100 million total Liz coin. Um, and we've got a, a series of these that are available for uh, rewards pools. Uh, for gamers in the ecosystem. Uh, we've got obviously our supporters in terms of the seed and the pre-seed round in our community um, that are going to have the, the Lizcoin token. But really, um, for those that are probably in your audience, <clears throat> many are probably aware of the Alluvium uh, ILV token structure. It's very, I would say, very strongly based on ILV. So you've got yield farming, you've got you know, revenue uh, distribution components there. Um, but again, for us, the key difference is as long as you're actively participating, you can then partake in those those elements in the ecosystem. All right. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so my next question, when generally when you see a project that has like an NFT collection and then they announce another NFT collection in a coin, you start thinking like, are, are you devaluing what's already out there? So my question is, does this Liz coin and these new elemental lizards does that devalue the venture lizards in any way, or does it increase their value? Do, do we have anything to worry about on that front? Yeah, no, it's it's a great question. So I, I also am very critical of projects that if they're going to create a new collection or a new token or whatever that might be, you, you better darn well understand why are you doing so and how does it fit into your broader ecosystem? Because I just see project after project that just, you know, mints something new but like there's no clarity for why they exist. So for us, absolutely, there's very clear pathways for uh, like who and why would you own each of these assets. So the Genesis and the Venture ETH lizards, the, again, the, the current collection that we know, um, these are and, and will remain the only the only assets that are participating in the portfolio sub DAO. So if you want that early stage deal flow, if you want the alpha for uh, investment opportunities, trading opportunities, you know, all of that is tied directly with those with the ETH lizards collection. Um, that's that's who you know the collection that you want to be participating in as a builder, as an OG, maybe in in DeFi, as someone who's very passionate about um, funding GameFi projects, that's the collection for you. The Elemental Lizard Collection and the Lizcoin token, uh, these are the structures that are tied to that, again, that community and, and that partnership sub-DAO. These are for gamers. So if you're a gamer, if you're a content creator, if you're you know, a, a guild leader, you're going to want to be participating in the ecosystem on the gaming side. Uh, this is the collection you're going to be interested in. So the token is, again, the governance token. Um, it's got the financial uh, structures built around the suite of products that we're launching at ETH Lizards directly. Um, and the Elemental Lizard collection, this is going to be your battle pass mechanic, your upgradable RPG character uh, in Web3. So we've got a lot of partnership activations that are coming based around the Elemental Lizard collection. Uh, but again, very clear distinction in who might want one or the other of the collections based on your role and your interest level in Web3 Gaming. Yeah, I wanna touch more on those games in a minute, but before we get there, for the for the seed round that you have for this, the Lizcoin, the valuation is at what, $20 million for for Lizard Labs or or for the, the Lizcoin. How do you come up with that number? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess that's the question. How do you come up with that number and like what, what justifies it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So this is the, the valuation in a project is going to be based on the, the mar what the market says it is, right? Whether you're in a, a pre-seed, a seed round, or you're, you've already launched your token. Um, so for determining a valuation like this, you're generally going to be in discussions with a variety of investors, uh, usually venture capital firms. Um, sometimes it's going to be you know, angel investors in the space. Uh, we have a pretty big advantage in that um, we see through the ETH Lizards Council, um, really dozens of different projects, uh, what they're raising at as far as the valuations. And you're looking at this in terms of the broader macro economy. And so um, as we look at it, most studios that are raising today that are um, in a, a seed round position that are building, let's call them ecosystem or infrastructure uh, types of plays, they're in the 15 to $20 million valuation if, if they're being successful. Now, that's a, a very broad kind of uh, brush that I'm painting with here. 
every project is a little bit unique in terms of their vision, how much they're raising, what they already have out as far as product, uh, the team structure and so forth. Um, but for us, the key point is that the valuation is based on our proven ability to deliver uh, with the Battle on the Beyond platform, uh, and then our, our broader vision and the partners that we already have lined up. So if you were to list the kind of who's who of Web3 gaming and take the top 20 or 25 studios that are building today in the sector, fully half of them we're already partnered with for these series of interconnected games and experiences like Battle on the Beyond that we're building out. And so this is where the, the core unique value proposition of ETH Lizards, I think really shines through compared to a lot of other studios. And so that valuation is determined um, based on the VCs that are gonna be leading our round uh, and discussions with them. We, you know, it's not it's not like we're just picking a number out of thin air. Um, this is what, you know, from our discussions, the market is saying uh, the valuation of the project is worth right now. Uh, so you just mentioned Battle on the Beyond. Uh, that's already launched. That's your first uh, game, I guess you'd call it. Um, what What's next? What are we going to see next on that, you know, from that ecosystem? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so with this raise, uh, we're building out to grow basically three teams. Uh, like we have, we have one for Battle on the Beyond. Uh, we're going to add two more that allow us to build out this next next round of products with the, the gaming studios. So projects like Dimensionals and like Parallel and like Civitas and so forth. Um, in the same way that we built out Battle on the Beyond with Alluvium, we're going to build out other mini games, meta games, uh, tournament structures um, to, for, for gamers to just get added value with those studios. So go go play the games that you want to be playing. And now you're going to have additional elements that just add value to you as a gamer. We think it's a really strong value proposition. Um, and so in general, uh, the next products we haven't directly announced, um, but they will be these quicker build time, let's call it three to nine month cycles, uh, where we'll build out a mini game uh, featured on top of the platform. So again, Battle on the Beyond is a good example where we've taken the cosmetic line of the Louvatars with Alluvium, and we've now added an entirely new gamified element on top of it. Uh, and so doing the same, cosmetics make it very easy to do that with another studio, um, depending on what John, what their genre is, you know, what their collection structure is of NFTs. Um, but in general, in some cases, it might be like a uh, you know an additional world or level that we build out if they have user generated content as sort of a, a key value proposition that their studio is is allowing. Uh, in some cases, it might be a meta game or a tournament structure. Um, we haven't really announced all of the utility of the elemental lizards yet, um, but a big part of this is going to be in these broader intra-game, intra-IP competitions that you're going to want to be playing in across Web3 Gaming. We think that esports in Web3 is going to be a main value driver over the next decade, and Elemental Lizards are going to have a key role to play in that. So these are some of the next products that we're going to be building out. Um, I can't provide too many more details than that quite yet, just because we're still under NDA and, and in some agreements with the studios. But if you've seen Battle on the Beyond, you get a kind of a good exa example of uh, the types of product that we're going to be launching. And I saw in the recent pitch deck, a goal is to be working with at least half of the top 20 games in, in Web3. That sounds amazing. Is it achievable? How sure are you that this is going to happen? Yeah, so so let me say, um, if you look at these studios that, that we're talking about, not all of them are, are launched yet. And in fact, um, I would argue only only really one of them is is sort of fully launched with, uh, you know, with with uh, solid version of gameplay. So this is going to be a phased approach, right? Some of these titles are going to launch fully in 2024. Um, a few of them are going to launch till 2025. So what we're going to be doing is, is taking a very quality focused approach, one studio at a time, uh, putting together these building blocks that allow this, this broad interconnected experience for gamers to begin to, to take form. And so our goal is by the end of 2024 to have five of these activations live and then to basically replicate that again in 2025. So um, when we talk about having, you know, 10 of these interconnected studios, uh, interconnected experiences built out with these studios, it's not going to be immediately on day one. But what we will have are direct integrations as far as uh, tournaments and gameplay structures, uh, community activations with all of these studios in very short order. So we've got um, one that I'm super excited about. Uh, it's going to be 
uh, mid Q1 uh, called Mystery of the Nexus that's going to be an example of a kind of metagame competition with a, a host of these studios uh, while we're building out these broader platforms and experiences that will take you know, will take months instead of weeks. All right, well, you're kind of leading me into my next question here. So you talked about what's coming up maybe in the next year, year or two. In five years or five to 10 years, where do you see Lizard Labs? Yeah, so Lizard Labs, our vision is to be the nexus of Web3 gaming. And what I mean by that is we intend to have a series of connections to all of the top studios that exist. And, and this is not just, let's call them Web3 native studios that are building now. I think over the next five years and, and for sure over the next 10, we're going to see a lot of Web2 gaming studios that begin adding Web3 elements. And for sure, at that point, we'll be looking to incorporate with them as well. Um, in, in this five-year window, though, what we expect is to have literally every single one of the top studios that's building out good games. Uh, we're genre and, and chain agnostic, so we don't really care if you're a first-person shooter or you're an RPG game or, or you're a trading card game. If you're building out a really good game in Web3, we want to have an integration directly to you, kind of in this hub and spoke model where uh, this, this vast metaverse, to, to borrow an overused term of game studios, uh, ETH Lizards and Lizard Labs are at the center of it, where uh, if you want to go play with, you know, with a, a game like Alluvium, when you're done with that or you're taking a break or maybe you're playing three or four games at one time, you're going to come back via uh, Lizard Labs and you're going to be playing then with the next studio. Maybe you go over and play Civitas because you want to be doing a, you know, a 4X game for a while. Um, but, but Lizard Labs is becoming this hub of all of the activity across the sector because we're directly connected with each of those studios and frankly we're going to have some of the best competitive gameplay some of the most competitive gamers the best content creators that we're growing into as a brand that's great and, and i i truly believe in you know at least i i want to believe that at some point if you're in web3 gaming you're going to want one of these eth lizards as your pfp because it's just going to show that you are like you're in it you understand what it is. It's it's the board eight yacht club of Web three gaming. That's why I have some, and I'm holding on to them. But now let's get into some more of the some details that the community might want. There are some airdrops coming with the Liz coin and with Elemental Lizards. When can we expect those? And you know, some of the just give some more details on that. I know you said at one point that there it's going to happen in two different wave waves. It's not going to happen all at once. Yeah, that's right. So, um, so we've got the the Liz coin, uh, which is again the the native token of the community and and partnership sub DAO. Um, we're gonna have two different uh, tranches of uh, Liz coin tokens that'll be airdropped to Elemental hold. Or, I'm sorry, to to ETH Lizard holders. Um, those are gonna be done one uh, basically at the time of TGE of of the token launch, uh, and then another one. It'll be later on, you know, probably a, about a year after the fact. Um, so we we want to. You make sure that we incentivize and have community members that are here for the long run that, that are holding um again people that you know if you want to go out and, and trade and you know jump in for a little while absolutely go knock yourself out but we're really focused on the long-term value of being a part of our community um, and then the elemental lizards uh, are, are going to be airdropped each each eth lizard holder uh, is going to be eligible for two of those um, I, when I say airdrop, we're still working through the exact mechanic. It might be a, like a claim mechanic as opposed to an airdrop, um, but you'll be eligible for two elemental lizards. Uh, again, this is going to be in two different waves. Um, for those that have seen um, our lore, uh, or even if you haven't, uh, go and check us out. Check out the Liz decks in, in Battle on the Beyond. Um, it explains through uh, the first few chapters how the elemental lizards are, are positioned. Um, they are the warrior lizards of, uh, of the ecosystem. Uh, and so we've got two different time periods that very critically the elemental lizards are going to be appearing. And so you're going to see some of them here at the start when we have the collection launch uh, in, in late Q1 of next year. And you're going to see another another batch that comes later on. We haven't communicated exactly when that's going to be, um, but this is all part of the kind of vast unveiling of the ecosystem. Uh, and again, frankly, we need gamers to want to be here in the sector. We need titles to be out before, you know, if you tried to launch a collection of a million tokens for gamers, 
in 2023, there's just no demand for it. There aren't a million gamers that are here playing in Web3 anyways. Um, but if instead you you have a collection that's designed to grow as the number of gamers comes into the sector, now all of a sudden you you have a real value proposition, but you have to do so gradually. And so we, we're very aware of uh, you know the concept of dilution and value add. Um, but as long as you take a very uh, targeted, intentional approach that you're growing the community as there's demand for it, it makes a lot of sense. And so um, I can't get into all of those mechanics quite yet, um, but this will make a lot of sense as we unveil like what is the role of the the elemental lizards in some of these you know uh, esports and tournament activities moving forward? Is there a max supply for elemental lizards? There is, yeah. So we're we're gonna have twenty thousand elemental lizards as the collection. Um, and again, to, to your point, like we think the ETH lizards are going to be uh, the community for OG investors and builders in Web three gaming. The elemental lizards are going to be the OG uh, top tier pinnacle of NFT collections for Web3 gamers, right? Again, those uh, top tier, top quality gamers. If you are an esports player today, again, take your pick of genre, you're gonna want to be an elemental lizard before it's all said and done. So moving on, last question here. So you're gearing up for this this seed round for the Liz token. Um, just give us more details on that. Like how can you get involved if you wanna be part of this seed round? When is it starting? You know, if somebody's watching this and they don't have a clue, Tell, tell them what they need to do. Yeah, so uh, right now it's the 13th of December, 2023, as we're recording this. So um, our seed round is, is just getting ready to kick off with our community. So it's going to start on the 15th of December and go through the 19th. Uh, again, closed closed access uh, for the community of, of ETH Lizard holders uh, for this. So uh, if you're hearing this and it's before the 19th of December, um, you'll have an opportunity to participate if you, know, if you uh, pick up an ETH Lizard and join the community. Um, beyond that, the seed round is gonna be closed for, for only institutional and accredited investors. Um, that said, uh, if you are one and, uh, and you're listening to this interview, fantastic. Uh, we'll have, we have a site, uh, if you just go to the ethlizards.io, um, uh, main site, maybe Najee, if you could include that in, uh, you know, in the links here, um, we've got a, a guide that'll walk you through uh, how to get in touch with us to, to talk through, uh, potentially participating in that round. Um, and then lastly, I would say, look, you know, maybe you're not an ETH lizard and you're like, Hey, I, I'm not sure I want to, you know, I want to join the community fully, but like the vision sounds really interesting. I want to get involved. Um, we will have a public token sale, uh, in 2024 as well. So, um, keep your eyes out, uh, follow Najee, follow, uh, eat us on ETH Lizards, uh, either in Discord, on Twitter, on, on YouTube. Uh, we'll for sure have communication leading up to that, um, that you could participate in the, the initial public sale of the tokens as well um, when we get closer to that, that appropriate time. Awesome. Yeah, so I'll leave um, some links down below. I'll also leave a link to the, the pitch deck that's out. Um, I also made a video going through that pitch deck. Annie, I'm not sure if your video is out, but I think, Annie, you have one coming out too going through the pitch deck as well. But I mean, that's it. Thanks for coming on. Uh, I'm excited about all this. I'm sure a lot of the people watching this, they're excited as well. Uh, any you know final words, any last things that you want to say before we get out of here? Yeah, Najaf, I really appreciate it. Um, again, we, we've been friends for a long time uh, working together in the sector as, as content creators, as fellow lizards, um, and uh, really appreciate the thoughtfulness that, that uh, goes into your, your interviews and uh, the content that you build out. Um, I would just say for, for your audience, uh, you know, the, the sector has been a, a challenging one to be in with, I think, a lot of initial hype and excitement in 2021. Um, and then, you know, for the last couple of years, it's, it's been pretty painful, right? It's been a long time coming because, frankly, games take a long time to build. Um, so that said, anyone who's uh, following along, um, I just encourage find some good communities, find some good projects that have continued to build, uh, have not lost sight of their vision uh, throughout the ups and downs of, of the markets and of, uh, you know, the sector going through those growing pain um, because really the, the next year, uh, as we look at all these, these titles that are going to be launched in the sector, very exciting times. And uh, I think we're going to see a pretty pretty solid influx of gamers come in as games that have good gameplay uh, are finally launching and that, that have good sustainable structures. So uh, yeah, just encourage you. Um, we're still very early in the industry. Uh, it's a good opportunity for those that want to uh, to really learn and grow into the sector, uh, to just keep following good projects and good builders uh, like yourself, and Najaf. So big thank you for, for your support as always. Yeah, I appreciate that. 
And if you are new here or if you are uh, sub to this channel already, you know, I make a ton of Alluvium content and ETH Lizards is that's that next project for me. I'm going to be making more content on that. And uh, my goal is to be the number one ETH Lizard uh, content creator. So we'll see if I can uh, follow through with that. But thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. Annie, I will catch up with you soon. Awesome. Thanks, Ajay. Right. Be well.